Traveling all over Cape Cod, we visited another spectacular restaurant on 6A in Dennis, Massachusetts. And if you haven't been to this quaint, rustic old captain's house, then you're certainly missing out. We met with owners David and Peter Troutman, who gave us an inside look to the amazing appetizers, entrees, and desserts prepared by their award-winning Chef Jan of 25 years. Come with Chef Secrets as we visit the outstanding Scargo Cafe. Gentlemen. Hi, Teresa. It's thrilled to have you here. Thanks so much for having me. It's such a charming, quaint little restaurant. It's so cozy here. Well, thank you. I love the tavern. The fireplace is charming. And you have a patio out in the back also. We do. It's open in the summer for lunches and uh, in the evening for as a waiting line. A great place to have a cocktail. Very nice. I'm dying to get out there this summer. <laughs> anyway, I think you know that I do a lot of research when I visit an establishment. And I did a little... Um, studying on the history of Princess Scargo mm -hmm. and the legend. Is the restaurant named after the legend? The, uh, the restaurant is actually named after the Scargo area of Dennis. There's a lot of uh, um, a lot of lore associated with the Scargo name. Uh, primarily the um, uh, Scargo Lake and Scargo Tower, Scargo Hill. Um, it all revolves around an old mm -hmm. Indian legend um, where um, the lake was dug by uh, Indian tribesmen in order to save the pet fish of uh, Princess Scargo. Uh, they, they stacked up all the, uh, all the soil and uh, it, it became Scargo Hill. Mm -hmm. uh, they eventually built a tower on the hill and if you look down at the lake, uh, it's actually in the shape of a fish. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a sweet story. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> it's such a calming... The legend is actually on our website. Oh, okay. Yes, I think that's where I read about it. Yeah. But it's such a, a calming and charming atmosphere here. And um, you do quite a bit of community service. Well, I don't know if I'd say quite a bit, but we do try and stay involved in the community unquestionably. Um, as I say, for, for many years, our focus in terms of our charitable donations always revolved around the, the benefiting the children of the DY area. Uh, more recently, the past three years, I've been involved with a group called Calmer Choice, uh, which is an organization that brings mindfulness and programs into the school systems uh, all, all over the Cape. Uh, it's, it's there to address bullying and uh, the, a variety of different suicides that occurred recently. Which is an important topic today. People Absolutely. need to pay more attention Absolutely. to that. And also, I've reviewed your menu. You've got some scrumptious items on there. Can you tell me a little bit about your most popular dishes? Um, our most popular dishes, of course, yeah. uh, I think we'll be talking about uh, later, but we've also got quite a few other um, uh, things that are really popular with our guests. Uh, seafood strudel, which is a seafood and puff pastry that uh, we've had on the menu for years. Every time we try to take it off, there's an uproar. Uh, we also uh, serve a, a great rack of lamb. Do you agree that the extensive variety on your menu is not just bold and unique, but it's definitely affordable? I would absolutely go with that. We have full dinners, but we also have a lighter side, I think, that makes things more affordable, unquestionably. Oh, because people need to have, um, they're on budgets when they go out to dine, mm -hmm. and they look for affordability, and they go by probably and say, that's too expensive in there, mm -hmm. but they need to know this. Yeah, we pretty much cover really the important. gamut. We cover the gamut, I think, of all, all, uh, all income levels. <laughs> sure. Now, I notice that your staff is like family here, and I know that when I dine out, it's really important to have really good service. They can either break or make your meal. And every time I've eaten here, it's been such a pleasant experience. Absolutely, I'm in total agreement. Uh, a great service can, uh, can save a, a mediocre uh, uh, meal. And uh, that's true of anywhere you go. Uh, we've got a great staff. Um, mm -hmm. Many of them have been here for um, in excess of 20 years. Our chef has been here 22 or so years. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of our staff have been with us uh, 8, 10, 12 years. Mm -hmm. um, uh, some come and go, too. We've mm -hmm. had a lot of people return. <laughs> and uh, we, we, we absolutely have a very cohesive uh, family-like group. 
Sure, sure. Now, Chef Jan, I know you just mentioned that she's been here over 20 years. Mm -hmm. That's dedication. Mm -hmm. That's really Absolutely. amazing. Um, and consistency is important in food and service mm -hmm. and having a great chef. Okay, gentlemen, thanks so much for joining me, and I'll see you both later. Come on into the kitchen with me. Hi, Chef Jan. Can I join you? Hi, Teresa. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for having me in your kitchen. I really appreciate your time. Oh. We're happy to have you here. Thanks so much. Now, can you tell me a little bit about the three items you plan on preparing today? Sure. We're going to be making a tuna martini with yellowfin tuna, a wildcat chicken, and grape nut custard, which is our most famous dessert. Oh, awesome. Can I help? Of course. I'll please. act as your sous chef. Okay. I'm serve safe certified and I have my apron. Oh, good. Please. <laughs> okay. Awesome. So All right. let's get started. We have the ingredients for the honey soy marinade, which we marinate the tuna in. If you could just chop that for me, I'd appreciate it. Okay. And I just washed my hands, so. Oh, good, good, good. We have gloves if you prefer. We're actually going to start with soy sauce, two ounces, sesame oil, two ounces. an ounce of orange juice. You can put that in there. That's a tablespoon of pickled ginger. Pickled ginger and wasabi. Are they very spicy? Wasabi is. Pickled ginger isn't. And if someone wanted to substitute any of this, what can they substitute some of it with? You could take out the pickled ginger and use either dried ginger or regular ginger, uh, fresh ginger that isn't pickled if sure. you don't like the vinegar. Um, as far as the other ingredients, it wouldn't taste the same if you substituted anything. So I would keep with those. Okay. We have an ounce of fresh honey. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that people have to be very careful when preparing raw fish. Mm -hmm. So what's the most important aspect that they need to look out for? Well, fresh uh, tuna actually, sashimi tuna comes frozen. So you want to make sure that you're thawing it right, correctly, mm -hmm. and um, just make sure it's cold, refrigerated all the time. Okay, so we have all our ingredients in here, and then we're just going to dice up the tuna in little pieces. Now, we know that a lot of items have medicinal purposes, mm -hmm. right, and tuna is Omega-3? Yes, it's rich in fatty omega-3 acids. So we're going to toss the tuna in the sauce. And we just marinate it a little bit. Because it's raw, it does absorb the marinade very quickly. Um, I know that a lot of people don't like raw fish. So we're actually going to do a shrimp uh, tuna also. Okay. A shrimp kind. Well, now, if people eat one fatty fish a week, after 10 years, do you realize it slows down their mental decline? It's amazing, isn't it? It really is. Yeah. And that's really good for us when we have these senior moments, right? <laughs> so what we're going to do, this is how we present it. We're going to take seaweed salad, which mm -hmm. is made from wakame seaweed. We can actually uh, purchase this at either uh, Ring Brothers, which is a market in Dennis, or Breakwater. Fish and Lobster, which is a fish company out of Brewster. Mm -hmm. So you can get these items locally. And what we do is we just layer the tuna with the seaweed salad. If you'd like to do that with the shrimp. Oh, sure. And seaweed is very good for you. Oh, it is. That's also very good for, for your mental uh, circulation and, um, it, and your memory and sleep. Mm -hmm. Actually, pickled ginger helps with nausea. Oh, it does? Yes, it does. If you ever oh, nice. want to eat some raw pickled ginger, <laughs> be like this. So, ready. okay, so I'm layering the... The seaweed first. Seaweed first. Then the shrimp. And just use your hands, huh? Mm-hmm. Got to get down and dirty with this, right? We like it, though. <laughs> as long as your hands are clean, and I know that you have a really clean restaurant here. Again, another layer? Or s yeah, you keep okay. layering it. So you're almost layering it like you were. Yeah, mostly for looks. Oh, but it's, it's nice beautiful. To get a bite of seaweed and every sure. Every bite. 
And then one more layer. Mm -hmm. And now why is yours, why do you have tomatoes in yours? And this is actually the tuna. Oh. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. We'll have to cut that out. That was a, like a, that was a blonde moment, huh? <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. So we have senior moments and we have blonde moments, that and that's okay. <laughs> We're actually going to be garnishing this with a shirasha sauce, which is from a hot sauce from Thailand. Uh huh. We actually add a little bit of mayonnaise, so it's not quite as spot, uh, spicy. You can get this in mild, medium, and hot. We use hot, um, but you can get it at your local grocery store. Mm -hmm. And we also use wasabi powder, which comes dry. It's a Japanese horseradish. Okay. Again, it's very, very spicy. So we thin it down with a little lemon juice and mayonnaise. Okay, but you can get it at your local grocery store. And that consists with the stats and the sauce? Yes. Okay, that's all on the sauce. So, no, it actually, we do the honey soy marinade. Okay. And then we garnish with the horseradish. It's called an alio because we mix it with mayonnaise. Beautiful. Okay. Oh, the presentation is beautiful. Yeah. You know, I'm trying to get viewers to eat a little healthier. It's just so important, and people don't realize if they eat healthier, then they're going to start exercising. Maybe they'll go to yoga. You yeah. know, anything, anything for the body. If they did one healthy thing for themselves, I think a day, yeah. they'd be really happy. I take yoga, and my my instructor, Missy White, puts you in these positions that unbelievable. You feel great when you leave there. Okay. So anyway, let's get back to the So you're going to garnish salad. Okay, we're going to garnish with the shirashi okay. sauce and the horseradish mayonnaise. And then we just add a little pickled ginger on top. Oh, this is so pretty. Gorgeous colors. Yeah. A little bit of sesame seeds for crunch. Lovely. Now, is this a very popular dish? Yes, it is. It's very popular, especially in the summertime. But even this year, um, people just love uh, sushi and raw tuna. Sure. So, and we garnish it with chopsticks ah. and a little bit of pickled ginger. A little bit of pickled ginger. Okay, so again, if someone doesn't like raw tuna, they can replace, they can substitute with shrimp or, or scallops. Or scallops. And th that, that's pretty affordable. Mm -hmm. And they can also come in here anytime the week that this show is aired and pick up the recipe to this wonderful We'd love to have it available, yeah. Tuna martini. The shrimp martini you don't do. This is just special occasion for me. We do substitute, so if anybody oh. wanted to come in and try it, we do it with shrimp for them, no problem. Very nice. Look at this presentation. <laughs> Gorgeous. Scargo Cafe Tuna Martini, one filet sashimi grade fresh raw tuna, one tablespoon of seaweed salad, one tablespoon of sirashi sauce, one tablespoon of wasabi, one teaspoon of mayonnaise, three slices of pickled ginger, honey soy marinade, one tablespoon of honey, one cup of soy sauce, one quarter cup of pineapple juice, one quarter cup of orange juice, three cloves of chopped garlic, one tablespoon of sesame oil, one quarter cup of shallots chopped, one teaspoon of ginger chopped, one quarter cup of parsley. Preparation. Tuna is cut into one quarter half inch cubes and tossed in marinade and placed in martini glass. Wasabi and sirashi are each blended separately with mayo to create orange and green spiced aioli. Drizzle tuna decoratively with sauces. Top with a pinch of seaweed salad and pickled ginger. Serve with chopsticks. Okay, so Jan, this dish is your famous Scargo Wildcat Chicken. Yes, it is. And we start with white chicken meat. We actually trim it and take off all the fat and sinew. And then we want to just cut it in nice tenderloin pieces. And which I'll, we're going to saute. And I'll cut your mushrooms, yeah, slice these up. Slices. We also use Italian sausage in this. 
Now, at home, you can bake it. We actually steam it, but if you're going to bake it, it probably 375 for about 20 minutes. You want it cooked through because we're just adding it to the dish. So you want everything already cooked. We're just going to slice it in six slices on the bias. Okay. okay, which means at an angle. It just gives a little bit nicer presentation to the food. Now, if someone doesn't like chicken, who doesn't like chicken? It's loaded That's with true. protein, excellent mm -hmm. for the muscles, especially when you turn 40. You <laughs> need those muscles, right? Like us. Um, what can they substitute it with? Um, you could substitute it with uh, maybe meat, but it just wouldn't taste the same. What about a really? veal? It's a yeah. more expensive. Chicken yeah, is the most is. affordable for the viewers, right. correct? It is. Okay. And then sausage? Italian sausage, sweet. And if someone doesn't like sausage, can they eliminate that yes, dish? They, they can, can eliminate just it. Keep it out of the dish. Okay. We have a lot of customers who come in and will order it without the sausage. Very nice. Okay, so we're going to take this chicken and we're just going to flour it lightly. And what we do is we just take the nice butter off the top. But we really recommend butter because it's better and healthier for you. Yes, it also gives it more flavor. Probably leave a little extra flour on to help thicken a sauce, but this is just a glaze. We're just glazing the chicken with the apricot brandy. Okay, so the flour will act as a consistency for the sauce. Right. And if someone wanted to use a different type of flour, a wheat flour, they don't have to use a white, correct? No, they don't. They okay. can use whatever they want. A lot of people are very health conscious, and I wish a lot of them were more health conscious. <laughs> but we're just going to wait until this turns golden brown on one side, and then we're going to flip it. Okay, and I'm going to continue cutting these mushrooms. Thank you very much. And mushrooms are also a great source of fiber and protein. That I'm sure a lot of people didn't know. Okay, we got our mushrooms going. Okay, see how it's nice and golden brown. Very nice. You want a medium heat, not a high heat, because you want to cook the chicken through before it burns. Mm -hmm. Okay. And again, this takes all of about five minutes. Five minutes to cook. Mm -hmm. A great quick dish. It is. It's very easy to make. And the viewers, the week the show is aired, the viewers can come down and pick up a copy of this recipe. Mm -hmm. And when they try it out at home, they'll think they're dining at Scargo. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Now, we actually serve this dish over rice when we present it, but it can be served over pasta or anything else that you'd like. Okay. And now you add raisins to this, We correct? do, at the end. We and actually flame it before we add the raisins. If you add the raisins too soon, they'll burn. Okay, we're just going to add the sausage and brown it up a little bit. And we're going to add a handful of the mushrooms that you like. And we're just going to saute that all together. It already smells spectacular. It is a good dish. Now, I wouldn't think of putting raisins in with the chicken and sausage, but it gives it that nice sweetness and the brandy. Yes. The, the dish originally um, was, when you talk to me, the dish was originally made with some apricots, sliced apricots. Oh, okay. So you can replace, if someone doesn't like raisins, they can mm -hmm. replace it with apricots. Yeah. Um, what about like a dried cherry? Sure. Dried cherries. That's a although, great idea. Although you're putting apricot brandy in, so okay. you kind of have to go with the flow. Now, what if someone wanted to use a cherry brandy? Yep. And you could do, do cherries, that. so they can substitute that way. Mm -hmm. Some people don't like certain flavors, so yeah. it would be nice to give them other ideas for substitutions. But raisins okay. and apricots are nice together. Yep. Very so cool. our chicken is totally cooked, our sausage is brown, and our mushrooms are sautéed. When you pour the apricot brandy, of course it's flammable, so okay. you want to pour it away from the stove. Never take the bottle and pour it over the pan because chances are a reaction. On fire. Major reaction of flame. Okay, and you just add it in. Oh, and beautiful! Burn off the alcohol. Very nice. Now, would you ever consider this doing table side? You could. Our, our dining room is fairly small, so we don't have a lot of space out there. Sure. But yes, you could. That would be a great presentation, yeah. huh? As long as you handle the alcohol safely, it, it's easy dish to do. Of course. And then you just add about a little bit of raisins. You don't want to overpower it. In the sure. And that's it. Oh, I'm going to try this at home. Oh, without good. a doubt. Yeah. Sure. 
impress everyone with the flame. As long as I don't burn the kitchen, kitchen down. down. So and I took ServSafe certified classes oh, too. Oh, no, that's scary. <laughs> uh, but that's it. That's the dish. Okay. And we just serve it, as I said, over rice or pasta. Rice or pasta or any vegetable? Any yeah, vegetable at all? Like. Gorgeous. Gargo Cafe Wildcat Chicken. One large, lean, trimmed, boneless breast of chicken. One sweet Italian sausage. Five quartered, medium-sized button mushrooms. Two tablespoons of raisins. One quarter cup of apricot brandy. One quarter cup of clarified butter. One half cup of flour. Preparation. Pre-cook, drain, and chill Italian sausage. Slice into half-inch slices. Preheat saucepan on medium heat and coat pan with clarified butter. Lightly dredge strips of chicken and flour and place in pan. When edges of chicken become white rather than translucent, turn over. Add sausage and mushrooms. Cook for approximately two to three minutes. Add raisins and immediately add one ounce of brandy carefully as brandy ignites. Toss and pan gently as glaze forms. Do not overcook raisins, serve over rice. Teresa, now we're gonna make the grape nut custard, um, our most popular dessert. We were actually asked by Bon Appetit for the recipe, so that was very impressive. Um, we're gonna crack nine eggs if you'd like to. Oh, absolutely. Have you ever cracked eggs with one hand? Uh, no, but Would I can you learn. Would you like me to teach you? Sure. Okay. What we're going to do is you're going to hold the egg like this, mm -hmm. crack it on the side, and use your third, your fourth finger to just open it up. We sometimes have competitions as to how fast people can crack eggs, so. There you go. Well, look at that. Now you have to do it with two hands. Okay. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can do it. Okay. I hope you're not gonna get all the shells in here. Oh I'm sorry, what a That's mess. That's all right. Ay, ay, ay. That's why we use okay. an egg shell to get all the shells that might get there. Okay, so the ingredients obviously are eggs and yeah. sugar, light cream, cinnamon, nutmeg, and great nuts, and vanilla. Beautiful, and eggs are a wonderful source of protein. We know that. Okay, now you see I'm back to two hands here. I'm That's sorry. Okay. Just going a little quicker. All right, here you go. You got to tell? Yep. We want to add the sugar first with your egg. Mm -hmm. And you have cinnamon here also. I do, cinnamon and nutmeg. Cinnamon acts as an anti inflammatory. Nice. I think if people would just do a little more research on the items that they use in their cooking, they'll know and realize how much medicinal purposes these items have. Mm -hmm. Could you open the light cream? Sure. You actually want to add the sugar to the eggs first so it dissolves. If you add the light cream first, the sugar won't always dissolve and it'll stay in the bottom of your bowl. So add the sugar first. Sugar to the eggs first and then your light cream. The whole thing? Mm-hmm. Okay. Actually, this is a half gallon, so we're going to add both light cream. The pan that we're making serves about 20 people. Okay. Now, do you know nutmeg in Arab countries is considered an aphrodisiac? As long as yeah, they, as, as long as they talk much. to their doctors and they don't eat too much of it, yeah. they'll be good, right? They will. Okay, we're going to put in two tablespoons of vanilla. And vanilla calms the stomach, reduces anxiety, stress. Okay. We actually cook the grape nut in a double boiler. So what we're going to do is the cream. We sprinkle a cup of nut, uh, grape nuts. And this is just regular grape nuts from the cereal box? Yes, the cereal box. And grape nuts are not nuts, right? They're a combination of wheat and barley. Sure. So we just sprinkle it over the top and they will sink to the bottom as we bake it. Okay, and now we're gonna put a, table, a teaspoon of cinnamon and a teaspoon of nutmeg. And we put it in the sifter. Wait a minute. Oops. You wanna combine them. Ah. So they spread evenly over the grape nut. Okay. And we use a sifter in case the spices have little 
Uh, oh, I missed the end. I'm sorry. Yeah, the little okay. chunks. Yeah, okay. The little chunks. And to make sure that they combine and they spread evenly, we'll just stir it around. Uh -huh. Oh, it smells spectacular. Oh, oh it's, yeah, it smells like the fall cinnamon nutmeg together, doesn't it? It does. It's so nice. We actually have one in the oven. Oh, look at this. Spectacular. The hardest Let me move part, some of these for you. The hardest part about grape nut custard is telling when it's done. So what we do is you bake it for an hour and a half at 325, uh -huh. and then you, if it jiggles, if it's, you can tell when the, it's not soupy anymore, it'll just jiggle a little bit. Sure. But you can also take your fingers and just pull it apart and see how the custard is nice and firm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it needs to have this type of consistency. Yes. Okay. Yes. And how long would they bake this for? An hour and a half. An hour and a half. At 325. 325, there you go. Okay, and you can't bake this in a convection oven. You have to bake it in a normal oven because the custard will cook too fast and it'll come out like scrambled eggs. Okay, and then this is chilled? It is chilled. So this is the Great Mud Custard set. It takes about 12 hours once you bake it. And all you do is scoop it. We use a little bit of fresh whipped cream. Okay, now a lot of people, even though there's a little bit of fat in this with the cream, mm -hmm. if someone wanted to indulge in this and not use whipped cream, they could do a frozen yogurt, frozen vanilla yogurt on it, or a dollop fresh. of creme fraiche. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, spectacular dish, and it's just so festive. Look at this, Scargo Cafe, famous grape nut custard. Scargo Cafe Famous Grape Nut Custard. Nine eggs, two cups of sugar, one half gallon of light cream, one tablespoon of vanilla extract, one tablespoon of cinnamon, one tablespoon of nutmeg, one cup of grape nut cereal. Preparation. In a large mixing bowl, whip eggs, cream, and sugar. Transfer to one half hotel pan in a bath water. Sprinkle evenly on top one cup of grape nuts. Sprinkle lightly on top one half teaspoon each cinnamon and nutmeg. Bake at 375 degrees for one and a half hours. Time varies with oven. Remove and allow to cool at room temperature. Now, Jan, a lot of people want to know what goes on behind the line and who's serving us all these spectacular dishes out in the dining room. So they want to know a little bit about the chef, something personal. Can you tell me something maybe that inspired you? Yes, I used to sit when I was younger at the kitchen table and watch my grandfather cook. He was Italian and he would make these just magnificent meals, but he never measured anything. He just always put a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and I just grew up with that and it really inspired me to cook. Oh, that's nice. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Can you do that in the kitchen here? Uh, no. <laughs> no, I wouldn't go too well. <laughs> yeah, food quality, right? Yes. Quality control. Consistency. Consistency yes. and quality control. Thank you so much for sharing that secret oh, with us. Welcome. I appreciate it. And thank you for having me in your kitchen. Thank you so much for coming. You're very welcome. We'll see you in the dining room. We're going to talk about what beverages go well with all of these wonderful dishes. So don't go away. We're going to discuss the tuna martini and each one of these beautiful dishes and what wines complement each one of them. Would you like to start, Peter? Sure. The, uh, the tuna martini uh, is a very spicy dish. Um, it would stand up to almost anything, but in order to uh, create some balance, I think a, um, a classic New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. Um, a lot of people are, are very fond of these wines these days. It would go perfectly with that. Um, we've got one right here that's uh, um, called Lobster Reef. It's a uh, it's a very typical grapefruity sort of uh, sort of wine, and it would go nicely. Absolutely. Oh, very fruity. Get a little grapefruit on that, don't you? Smell oh, like yeah. Grapefruit? Okay, and I have to eat with, with the. Well, you know, I'm <laughs> I don't I'm think not half chopsticks. Okay. Fan. You know, it, <laughs> chopsticks. Some people are ardent uh, ardent fans when they're eating Asian food. You know. Oh, spectacular! Very crisp. Good. Glad you enjoyed it. There's a little bite to it. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's very nice, especially for people that may like a lot of sushi. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And we'll move on to the wonderful 
Wild cat wild chicken? Wild chicken. Yeah. yeah, this is a dish that we've had on from I think our second or third year open. So it's been, on, been around for quite a while. It actually came about, uh, our company took for many years a, a, a staff trip, uh, a ski trip, uh, up to New Hampshire. And this dish, it's called wild cat chicken because it came from Wild Cat Tavern in uh, Lincoln, New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, at one particular evening that we were there, I think our staff, there were about 35 of us, half of them all had this dish called actually Chicken Mondo was the original name. It had uh, dried apricots in it. Now we've altered it to make it our own. Uh, we use the, we flambe it obviously with the, the apricot brandy and we've eliminated the the, uh, the dried apricots. But we did leave the name at least while I had to give them some, sure. to give them a little And it was so much it. fun cooking this in the kitchen yeah, with Chef it's great. it's great at food shows, but uh, you know, it's great you know for us to show off a little bit. Uh, uh, and it's really something different that you're not going to find in other restaurants. May I taste? Absolutely, please. Oh, and it looks spectacular. A little, oh. bit, little bit of sweetness from that brandy, from the apricot. That's okay. Mm -hmm. Sweet is good, especially with the mushrooms and the raisins. The flavors all blend together beautifully. And your... This is a Spanish Rioja. I think uh, it would, it would uh, complement the, uh, the spiciness of the sausage rather nicely, even mm -hmm. though uh, um, people do tend to pair white wines with uh, chicken. Um, a nice Riesling would go just as, uh, just as well. I think it's just a matter of personal preference. Now, I told you, my son-in-law and my daughter, they own a winery in the south of France. Wow. Hmm. Domaine Bassac. I yeah. might as well give them a plug. Sure. It's an organic winery. Sure. Huh. And he brought some home at Christmas time. They were spectacular. If I can get any bottles, I'll bring them to you. So get great. him to we'll ship me some. Be thrilled to carry it. <laughs> Absolutely. And do you carry any organic wines? We do. We do. And of course, Very the nice. French were, um, you know, have been growing organically for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we have uh, some uh, some domestic <laughs> organic wines as well as uh, some of the French are just naturally uh, grown organically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice. People mm -hmm. need to try it. It's mm -hmm. Domaine Bassac. Mm -hmm. Shall we try the wonderful, grape famous nut custard. grape nut grape custard? Grape nut custard, again, this is something that we developed uh, in our first year um, and it stayed on the menu uh, all, all this time. Uh, Sort of an old throwback, uh, classic comfort food. Uh, you know, you see it a lot on Cape Cod, but to be honest with you, ours uh, is sort of a, a heartier version because we make it with light cream. Oh, it's uh, decadent. And it's, mm. it's, it's been so popular. Bon Appetit has written to us twice for the recipe uh, from their reader's column, RSVP, uh, in the magazine. Uh, we have sent them the, uh, uh, the recipe, but they do have a test kitchen where they try to make sure that um, that they're able to produce it in, in their kitchen on a consistent basis so that they can encourage their readers to make it. Mm. Uh, they don't really write back, but they have written to us twice for the recipe. So. Oh, you know, it's I, spectacular. I, I, I got to say, I know you asked Jan earlier uh, about substituting certain things, and I guess my answer to, to the question would be, no, don't substitute. It's got to be the way it is. Uh, it just uh, you're, you're better off sharing it with somebody and cutting the portion in half, uh, but, but keep the, the recipe as is. Yeah. That's right, yeah. and it's fun to share. Yeah. It really is lovely, and I want to thank you both so much for having me. It's our me. pleasure. Thank Thanks. you. I am also searching for sponsors for Chef Secrets. So if you're interested or know of a company and you don't have to be in the food industry and you'd like to sponsor Chef Secrets, I will shoot a segment of Chef Secrets in your kitchen and you can reveal some of your secret recipes. Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time when we plan on revealing more Chef's Secrets.